One of the main reasons for the overwhelming success of The Sopranos is some of the actors' own experiences with crime, which gives the show's wise guys and citizens a very realistic feel. In this episode, we discover which of The Sopranos' actors have gotten into trouble with the law not only on screen, but in real life as well. And more importantly, who among the cast of The Sopranos has real ties to the mafia? The first on our list is one of the most colorful Sopranos characters, Polly Walnuts, portrayed by Tony Sirico. Tony Sirico is a very complex fellow who is directly connected with the notorious Colombo family. Tony Sirico's life has been far from ordinary, marked by a tumultuous journey with a staggering 28 arrests throughout his lifetime. His criminal history began at the young age of seven, when he was caught stealing nickels from a newsstand. And from there, he built a formidable reputation in his neighborhood as a stick-up artist. Despite facing numerous brushes with the law, Tony continued down a path of criminal activity, resulting in two separate prison sentences. The first was for an illegal weapons charge, while the second was for armed robbery. In addition to these more serious offenses, he was also frequently apprehended for lesser crimes, such as disorderly conduct and robbery. When Tony was doing his second term in prison, he observed a group of former inmates called the Theater of the Forgotten, and it was a real eye-opener for him. He decided to abandon the criminal life for good and guide his life in the right direction of acting career, and as we can see, not in vain. By the way, I made a special episode dedicated to Tony's biography. You can find the link in the description. And while Tony transformed from thug to becoming a talented actor, our next hero did the exact opposite. Lilo Brancato Jr., who played Matthew Bevilacqua, one of the Sopranos' associates and a promising stockbroker pushing webistics, managed to do more stupid things than his screen character. The guy was arrested in May 2005 when he was caught using illegal substances. A little later, in June of the same year, he was arrested for possession of heroin. However, the young and promising actor, like his Sopranos character, was not willing to sit around and wait. And on December 10, 2005, Brancato was accused of killing a police officer in the Bronx. The cop prevented a robbery that Brancato and his girlfriend's father were trying to carry out. The police officer was calling all cars, but before the backup's arrival, he engaged in a gunfight with the burglars, during which the officer was fatally wounded. Brancato and his accomplice also suffered gunshot wounds and were arrested nearby the crime scene. The girlfriend's father was found guilty of cop's murder and sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. Brancato was tried for second-degree murder, but the jury found him not guilty. Nevertheless, the actor was found guilty of attempted first-degree robbery and sentenced to 10 years in prison. In court, Brancato cried and apologized to the family of the deceased, to which Cop's sister sarcastically declared that this was Brancato's Oscar-worthy performance. On December 31, 2013, he was released on parole. After getting out of prison, Brancato sought to restart his acting career, but failed to land any notable roles in major studio films. Chaz Palminteri openly stated that he would not help his former colleague resurrect his career. In 2018, Brancato starred in Wasted Talent, an autobiographical documentary about his rise and fall. The movie's title is a reference to a line from a Bronx tale when Lorenzo Anello tells his son, played by Brancato, that the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. At 47, Brancato, based in Yonkers, now focuses on helping others overcome addiction. With over a 100,000 followers on Instagram, he shares daily inspiration and works as director of public relations at More Life Recovery Center. Emphasizing personal responsibility, he acknowledges the accountability his work brings. Alongside his advocacy, Brancato is writing a screenplay, Never Meet Your Heroes, a drama on addiction, with Terrell Hicks co-starring as his wife. The film follows Joe Preston, a degenerate gambler, highlighting addiction's impact fueled by underlying trauma, the real gateway to substance abuse. Yet if it took Lillo almost 10 years to recognize his missteps, our next hero had the brain power to get off the criminal path on time. In a twist as gripping as one of his dad's mob plots, Robert Eiler, known as Tony Soprano's trouble-stirring son, Anthony Jr., faced real-life drama in 2001. Arrested for attempting armed robbery and caught with marijuana, he traded courtroom tension for a three-year probation plot twist. Fast forward to October 23, 2005, where Ehler finds himself in the midst of a police raid on illegal gambling clubs, a cameo in the Ace Point Club, but the charges remained off-screen, a mysterious chapter in his personal narrative. Then, Q July 2023, Eiler reinvents himself, 
launching the Not Today Pal podcast alongside Sopranos co-star Jamie Lynn Sigler. Shedding his past vices, Eiler emerges with a newfound podcast persona. Personally, it might not be my cup of tea, but witnessing Tony Soprano's legacy evolve through his kids is undeniably intriguing. Step into the intriguing world of Tony Darrow, the man behind the captivating persona of Larry Burris in The Sopranos. But this actor's real-life story is a tapestry woven with threads of notorious figures like John Gotti and Paul Vario. Picture this. Vario, a Lucchese crime family cap regime from Brooklyn, caught in the legal crossfire after Henry Hill spilled the beans. In 1984, Vario faced the gavel for fraud, enduring four years of confinement. But that wasn't the end of his legal tango. A 1985 extortion conviction added another decade to his prison odyssey, a gripping tale immortalized in the cinematic masterpiece Goodfellas. Enter Tony Darrow, whose path crossed with Vario, a scion of Brooklyn's mob hierarchy. Vario played puppet master, pulling strings to open a door for Tony in the world of nightclubs. The stage was set, and Darrow was ready for his act. Fast forward to 2011, and legal storm clouds gathered over Darrow as he grappled with accusations of involving Gambino members in debt resolution. The plot thickened as Tony pleaded guilty, anticipating a three-year prison stint. Yet the script took an unexpected twist, a six-month house arrest followed by two years of probation. After the legal saga, Tony emerged, claiming to have learned valuable lessons. But in the world of organized crime, as the saying goes, never say never. As we recall, Larry on The Sopranos had a brother named Albert. And as it turns out, the actor who played Albert on screen also has a lot in common with his Sopranos character. Richard Maldone is the man who brought the notorious Albert Burris to life on The Sopranos. But behind the scenes, Maldone's own life seemed to mirror the criminal underworld he portrayed on screen. His off-screen rap sheet reads like a script from a gritty crime drama featuring a laundry list of convictions, assault, grand larceny, forgery, and possession of stolen property. In a plot twist that could rival any Hollywood script, Maldone found himself facing a staggering 15-year sentence for selling ketamine. However, this real-life drama took an unexpected turn, as Maldone, like a seasoned wise guy from The Sopranos, outsmarted the legal system and managed to evade the looming charges. Maldone's on-screen journey began as Joey Zasa's vigilant bodyguard in The Godfather 3, and he continued to make his mark with roles in Analyze That and Wannabes. Even after his last television appearance in 2006, Richard Maldone refused to fade into obscurity. In a surprising move, he auditioned for the role of Johnny Dio in Martin Scorsese's film The Irishman. In The Sopranos universe, Gross steps into the shoes of Perry Annunziata, the tough cookie Tony recruits as his bodyguard and chauffeur in the series' grand finale. Perry's hot-headedness, however, puts a dent in his gig with Tony after a fiery clash between the two. Interestingly, it seems Gross mirrors his character's knack for impulsive choices. Flashback to April 2006, and Gross is making headlines for getting arrested after a woman claims he broke into her house. But that's just one of Gross's brushes with the wrong side of the law. Fast forward to 2013 in the gritty streets of New York, and our boy Gross is caught red-handed trying to pass off fake Benjamins. In a cinematic twist, he desperately ditches the incriminating cash before the cuffs come on. Insisting the money's as real as they come, Gross takes the plea route to dodge a potential 15-year stretch behind bars. Frank Anthony Vallelonga Sr., famously known as Tony Lip, brought real-life mobsters to the screen, portraying Philly Lucky of the Bonanno crime family and Donnie Brasco and Frankie Manzo in Goodfellas. His journey began at the Copacabana nightclub, where he crossed paths with Francis Ford Coppola, leading to a small role in The Godfather and marking his cinematic debut. Born in Beaver Falls to Italian parents, Tony Lip's family relocated to the Bronx. His childhood nickname, Tony Lip, hinted at his persuasive prowess in getting people to do what he wanted. Starting in 1961, he worked at the Copacabana as a manager, rubbing shoulders with numerous celebrities and mobsters. One notable chapter of his life unfolded when he served as a bodyguard during a tour with pianist Don Shirley, an experience later depicted in the 2018 film Green Book. The screenplay, co-written by his son Nick Vallelonga, featured Viggo Mortensen embodying the character of Tony Lip. The larger-than-life Big Frank from The Sopranos, portrayed by Michael Squitcherini, wasn't just a wise guy on screen. In 2002, the show's drama echoed reality as he was implicated in a chilling real-life mafia execution. Squitcherini, 
who passed away in 2001, was linked to a 1992 murder orchestrated by the De Cavalcante Mafia family, which was one of the original inspirations for The Sopranos. The victim, Ralph Hernandez, a drug dealer, fell prey to a wheelchair-bound capo Joe Pitts. Squicciarini's involvement in this brutal episode surfaced through witnesses who recognized him, connecting the actor to the crime that unfolded beyond the scripted world of The Sopranos. Vincent Pastor, renowned for his role as Big Pussy, found himself in a turbulent scene. Not content with just an argument, this off-screen drama escalated as he allegedly took his girlfriend on a wild ride involving a tumultuous encounter with the car's gearbox. The lady, now an unwitting co-star in this unfolding saga, took her grievances public. The hefty actor managed to escape a harsh sentence. Instead of a cinematic showdown, he's handed a community service stint, a plot twist that some might argue lets him off the hook a bit too easily. John Ventimiglia, who portrayed Artie Bucco, the soulful owner of Vesuvius, a character as flavorful as his restaurant's dishes. While Tony and the gang grabbed the spotlight, John Ventimiglia added his own unique spice with a dash of drama, a hint of DUI, and a sprinkle of coke in his bag, making him the unsung hero in a mob-dominated feast of chaos. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to Vano VHS and hit the like button. And if you want to show some love to Vano VHS, you can now buy us a coffee. Check out the link on your screens.